Welcome, dear listeners, to another spine-chilling episode. Today we get lost in the Derwent Woods with our tale, The Whispering Caves. The Gill Bridge, surrounded by dense trees, overlooked the Derwent Valley below. Paul, a passionate treasure hunter with his trusty metal detector, roamed this area often in search of lost riches. He was so engrossed in his activity that he didn't realize the sun was setting, and darkness would soon engulf the valley. Time flies when you're on the hunt for treasure, Paul said to himself in a happy tone, adjusting his metal detector. As the daylight waned, the shadows grew longer, and the once familiar surroundings became unfamiliar. Paul continued walking, trying to follow his path back to the bridge. I must find my way back soon, Paul mumbled, his voice tinged with concern. The rustling leaves and eerie silence started to unnerve him. He quickened his pace, but the dense trees seemed to obscure his path. Okay, stay calm. I just need to find the bridge, he said worryingly, trying to suppress the rising fear. Paul's heart pounded louder as the minutes ticked by. Panic began to set in as he realized the gravity of his situation. This can't be happening. I can't be lost. I've been here a million times, Paul exclaimed, his voice echoing in the twilight. He retraced his steps, but every path seemed to lead him deeper into the valley. The once inviting woods now appeared sinister, as if taunting him for venturing too far. I must have taken a wrong turn somewhere, he muttered, his hands trembling slightly. He paused to check his surroundings, hoping to spot something familiar. But the darkening forest offered no solace, only an overwhelming sense of dread. Think, Paul, think. There must be a way out, he said his voice now trembling. As he pushed through the dense undergrowth, Paul's mind raced with thoughts of the lost treasure being the least of his worries now. The chilling wind seemed to whisper eerie warnings in his ears. Come on, stay focused, he urged himself, trying to ignore the gnawing fear. Yet despite his best efforts, Paul couldn't shake the feeling that the valley and its trees were conspiring against him, determined to keep him trapped in their clutches. He was sure something was following him, is there someone there I could do with a little help right now? He shouted out. I need to find shelter for the night. I can figure this out in the morning. Attempting to rationalize his situation. The caves they will do, he said in hope. But even the prospect of shelter couldn't alleviate the growing unease. Darkness enveloped the valley, and the once familiar terrain now appeared as an impenetrable maze. Paul stood amidst the trees, his heart pounding in his chest and a deep sense of dread settled over him. He knew he was lost, and the caves could be his only salvation until morning. Heavy rain began to fall, each droplet adding to Paul's distress. The wet ground made every step treacherous as he scrambled down the side of the valley, desperately seeking shelter. Come on, Paul, you can do this, he muttered to himself, raindrops mixing with tears on his cheeks. His heart raced as he clambered down the steep slope, slipping and sliding in the mud. Fear and desperation fueled his ascent, but then a loose stone betrayed him. Paul lost his footing, and with a cry of alarm, he tumbled downward, smashing his head on a jagged rock at the bottom. For a moment, everything went black. When Paul finally awakened, the rain was still pouring down and thunder roared in the heavens. Suddenly, Paul realized there was something not right. He felt a sensation of thousands of legs crawling all over him. Panic surged through his veins as he realized he had landed on a spider's nest. Creepy spiders scurried all around, and he swatted at them frantically, but they seemed relentless in their pursuit. Fear and adrenaline continued to fuel his movements as he managed to escape the nest, but new horrors awaited him in the woods. Strange, malicious animals looking for an evening meal started to chase him as he stumbled around in the darkness, their claws tearing into his legs, making him bleed and writhe in pain. He stumbled and staggered, driven by the desperate need to find refuge in the caves. Please, let me reach the caves, he pleaded to his maker, his voice trembling. Just before he got to the cave, Paul looked up to see a silhouette of a young man and woman standing on the bank above him. Gavin, Joanne, is that you? But you both went missing, it can't be, can it? Paul thought. They seemed to be watching with delight as the horror unfolded. Their faces were obscured, but Paul could sense an unsettling wickedness emanating from them. They appeared to revel in his suffering, their presence adding an even greater sense of dread to the nightmarish scene. The woods seemed to conspire against him, the trees shifting ominously, 
and the animal cries echoing all around him. As he reached the mouth of the caves, his heart sank at the realization that the horrors had only just begun. Inside the caves, an eerie sight greeted him. There was an old wooden door with an upside-down cross burnt into it that he had never seen before. He had been to these caves many times before, so why was he only seeing this door now? What is this? Paul muttered, his mind reeling with confusion, fully aware of the nightmare happening all around him. He hobbled to the door with anguishing pain from the cuts in his legs. Anything will be better than what's happened so far. As he opened this odd-looking door, his heart nearly stopped at the sight that awaited him on the other side. It was a sight straight out of his worst nightmares. The two figures that were stood atop the hill stood there. Their silhouetted bodies and dark faces smiled at him with eyes that pierced his very soul. Then a voice straight from a horror movie said in a whispering voice, Oh, what delights we have in store for you. No, no, this can't be real, Paul cried, attempting to close the door. But before he could shut it, he was grabbed by what seemed like a thousand hellish hands that emerged from the darkness beyond the door. They gripped him tightly, their evil fingers digging into his flesh, and dragged him relentlessly through the door. His screams echoed in the cave, but they were drowned out by the sinister whispers that surrounded him. Paul's mind was overwhelmed with terror as he was pulled deeper into the nightmarish cave. As he was dragged further and further into the darkness, he caught fleeting glimpses of monstrous creatures outside the door, their eyes gleaming with malice. The pain of his wounds and the terror in his heart were all consuming as he was dragged deeper and deeper away from the cave door. Paul's consciousness began to fade and the line between reality and nightmare blurred. He was lost in a place of horror and despair, never knowing if he would return to the world he once knew. The next day, as the sun rose in the sky, the only things left in the caves were a broken metal detector and a dragged red handprint on the cave wall that stopped suddenly, as if the fingers had been holding onto something for dear life before being ripped into another world. Police, after being alerted that he was missing, searched the woods for over a month trying to find him, but it was never found. Local papers told the story, but like all news, the interest quickly dwindled, but his name and story would never be forgotten. This chilling tale of Paul serves as a reminder of the dangers that lurk in the darkness, and the price one might pay for seeking treasures best left undisturbed. Hey, while you're here with us, why not click that subscribe button and like the video? We really do appreciate you taking the time to listen to our tales. Until next time.